Ariel Helwani in Anaheim, California, just days before UFC 214, alongside the now former Invicta bantamweight champion Tanya Evinger, who meets Chris Cyborg on Saturday in her UFC debut for the vacant UFC women's featherweight title. Are you the former Invicta champion, or has that not happened yet? Yeah, that happened already. Okay. I'm not happy about it. I would like to remain the champion forever, but they won't let me. So when you were on my show, and I'm sorry to hear that, by the way, but it is good that you are here finally getting this opportunity. When you were on my show just a couple months ago, I sort of made a bet with you. I said, what do you think? This time next year, are you in the UFC? And you were kind of on the fence as to whether or not that would happen. Is it kind of weird that you're actually here, that it's finally become a reality? I mean, obviously, this can't count because they're trying to get my ass kicked or something, <laughs> but it ain't going to happen. Um, no, I don't know. I, I think... It, I thought eventually it would happen, but uh, I kind of gave up on the idea for a while. So. What do you mean? You, you think you're just being served up as an opponent? I think I'm just somebody that's crazy enough to take fights that other people aren't. Obviously, I, I win those fights usually. Um, I plan on winning this fight, and I, I think that um, it's just one of them things, that the role I play. Do you think they don't want you to win? I don't know who they want to win. I don't know who they hate more, me or her. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, I think it's a weird situation to think about, but uh, I can't imagine losing, so um, I'm definitely here to win. You're sort of halfway through at this point. What is it like being a part of the machine, especially on a card this big? I don't know. Either it hasn't hit me yet or um, I'm just kind of over the, the lights and, and smoke pretty much from all this stuff. Uh, I felt like... Uh, I got a lot of attention in Invicta, and, and they kind of prepped me for all this, so it kind of feels like another fight week. So do you feel a little more nervous, a little less nervous? Like, how would you describe what you're feeling about the experience? I don't feel anything, actually. It's real weird. I wow. think my last fight and then this fight, I just haven't felt nervous. I, I don't know if I hit that point where I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to go out and fight. It's just my job now, or or I'm just comfortable with the fact that, that um, I don't know, in the situation I'm in, I just feel comfortable. So. Do you think that will change come Saturday? Are you the kind of person that does usually get nervous on fight day? I used to get really nervous. And uh, earlier in my Invicta career, I would do uh, interviews and I'd be like, man, we got to do this title right now because I don't know if I can handle the nerves were what killed me, not the fight, the nerves. So um, I kind of got past that. And, and I'm at a point now where I just, uh, I've learned how to deal with it. And, and I think that um, I've kind of figured it out in, in ways that I, I just didn't even know I'm doing. And, and I, I know the last few fights I haven't – I've been nervous for the fights and, and stuff like that, but I haven't been, like, nervous. I don't, I don't know. It's the, last, the last two, I just kind of haven't – I don't know, man. I just um, – I feel comfortable. Where were you when you got the call that you were coming to the UFC, that you were going to be the opponent to fight Chris Cyborg in this fight? Uh, I was eating sushi. <laughs> uh, who called you? My manager. He called me, and um, he uh, – I think he said that this is the first time he's heard about it, and um, I, I think he's uncomfortable about it, you know, because he manages me and Chris. So I think he was a little uncomfortable about it, but obviously I know it's my job. It's her job. It's his job to do what he does, so it's no conflict, conflict of interest on my part, so I don't care. Did you know that you were even in the running for this fight? Uh, I've volunteered to fight her a couple times, quite a few, a few times, about four now, so I kind of knew that shit was going to go down like this. I just didn't know... If it was going to happen, I thought it happened earlier on Invicta. And what was your reaction when you found out that it was happening? Um, what are y'all paying? Yeah. <laughs> That's always my reaction. How much you paying? I'll fight anybody for money. And are you making more for this fight than you were in Invicta? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, they, they have a deeper wallet. But, um, you know, I, I think it's uh, deserved. I think with the amount of fights I got and level I'm fighting, I think that I deserve this much money. So, I mean, it's a, it's a decent payday. And... Um, my contract changes a little when I go back down to 35, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm I'm happy. I, I guess uh, considerably, I've made it. So you know, I'm just here to here to work. Is this the biggest payday of your career? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you don't win. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you say when you go back down to 135, is that inevitable? Are you going back down to 135, win or lose? Well, if I win this fight, then uh, we rematch. But then beyond that, I don't know. We haven't really discussed, like, if I beat her twice, I, I guess I would stay at 45. Um, but I know that uh, how my contract is set now. If I lose, I go down to 35. Okay. And so she has a rematch clause? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Automatic? Yep. Wow. And and so this fight was originally supposed to be Cyborg versus Jermaine Durandamy, and Jermaine said, 
essentially, I don't want to fight her because she's a, a PED user. And then they eventually stripped her. And then it was Megan Anderson. And then it was you. Do you understand where Jermaine is coming from? Or does it seem crazy to you that she allowed them to strip her of the belt just because she didn't want to fight Cyborg? Uh... I just don't care. Uh, I don't give a shit about anybody else's career. Um, I'm here to fight, and I think that um, if you're the champion, you fight everybody. If she's passing drug tests, if she's if she's in the weight class and they're letting her fight, I mean, they're going to let her fight. So, I mean, crying about it ain't going to help anybody. So are you the champion or you're not? You want to fight or you don't? So, Do you care about her past at all? Do you have any questions about her? Do you have any reservations about fighting her? You know, I think that everybody's asking me these questions. What if she doesn't make weight? What if she fails a drug test? Man, I want both of them things to happen. Uh -huh. If she doesn't make weight, I get some of her money. If she doesn't pass her drug test, she can't win the title. I mean, I, I don't give a shit at the end of the day. I'm here to fight. The fight's going to happen. So, of course, I want both of them things to happen. Speaking of making weight, like, for example, if you don't mind me asking, how much do you weigh right now? How much weight do you have to cut to make 145? Uh, at the beginning, I cut 20 to make this weight. Wow. So um, it's still a decent cut. I'm five over right now, so I'll be good. But this is obviously much easier for you than 135, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, that's a 30-pound cut. That yeah. hurts. That and hurts. Are, are you usually 20 pounds over starting your camp, or is it because this kind of came to you late in the game? Uh, no, I walk at 165, so okay. that's just how fat I am. So yeah. why do you want to go down to 135 after this if it's so much easier to go to 145? Um, because I think I'm dominant at 135. I think most of the competitions there, I think I'll get more fights. And obviously they're not signing 45ers and – I don't know. 35 has always been the weight with all the girls. So yeah. It is a little weird that they're not signing anyone at 145, mm -hmm. isn't it? I think that they, they missed the boat, and they let everybody sign them before they did. So I think they're everywhere else, but okay. you'll see. But you are guaranteed a spot. Like You're not going back to Invicta if things don't go your way on Saturday, right? Right. I'm, I'm definitely here for five fights. And um, then after that, I, I do have a clause with Invicta that if UFC ever does cut me, I have to come back and defend okay. the title or fight for the title or whatever. So... Um, yeah, I'm coming. Don't don't th get too like comfortable with my belt. <laughs> you have said though that if I don't make it to the UFC, you know, I'm fine with my legacy. And Victor was great. I love being their champion. Now that you're here, though, can you admit that it would have felt a little incomplete if you never got to this point? Uh, no, I can't say that. I I think I got to a point where I was over uh, being pissed off about all that. I was at a point where I really was fine with being Invicta champion. I felt like I. At the end of the day, I'm the only one that's got to deal with me. So I was comfortable and, and satisfied with everything that I was putting out and everything I was doing, and, and, you know, that's all that matters. It seems like some opponents lose to Cyborg before they even fight her. Do you feel like there's a psychological component to fighting her? Like you almost have to not treat her as, you know, the killer Cyborg and just treat her as another. Like how do you, how do you handle this? She has been unstoppable for so long. Psychologically, how do you approach fighting her? Man, I've been unstoppable for so long. That is true. So, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not scared of people. Um, you know, I think I took in fights in Invicta where they were like, called me and they're like, if you don't want this, I realize that I can't find anybody fighter. You know, she looks scary. She has sideburns, blah, blah, blah. You know, I just, I'm, I'm all right with that, you know. <laughs> so um, I'll fight her, you know. So I, I definitely, uh, I definitely am not that type of person to get intimidated by a fighter. I, I lose because. I don't believe in myself. I don't lose because I think they're better and more scary and, and more dominating than me. That ain't why I lose fights. Why do you think you can beat her? Um, I think I'm a smarter fighter. I think I can adapt. I think I'm able to fight in different situations and figure the fight out inside the inside the cage, you know, and if shit ain't going my way, I'm able to switch it up. I don't get broken. I don't get beat down, and, and I definitely don't get the shit beat out of me. So, um, you know, it's a big cage, man. You got to hit me. I'm hard to hit. In your opinion, like, what is the key to beating her? Where is her biggest weakness? Do you know? Uh, I have no clue, and I think that... Um, you don't study her? I study everybody in a sense. I, 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 I don't change my, my style. I change my defense, maybe. I train with people that um, favor her style, and, and so I'll get a little bit better defense on that end. But, um, man, I go in a fight thinking that somebody's shit on the ground and they're great stand-up and then they've ended up working on the ground a lot and make it hard on me in the ground so then I stand up and they're shit on their feet so I don't really go into a fight where I think that I know somebody because that's the type of fight that's going to break me when it doesn't go my way so I go in a fight open-minded and go in there and go whichever way I feel that I can take it and that I'm winning. You are a massive underdog as far yeah. as the betting lines are concerned. Do you feel disrespected by that? Um, I don't care. I think uh, uh, y'all, all you people are stupid. Uh, you know, I, I think that um, 
I, I think I'm always the underdog, and I, I said this on an interview, and somebody posted all the odds up, and I was up in a lot of the odds, not by much, but on all my Invicta fights, I was up, and I never even looked at the odds when I was on Invicta. I, I never even knew that, but I was just going off of the fact that the interviewers and the people that are doing the rankings and all the all the people behind the scenes, they were saying, you know, if, if Tanya beats this girl, then she'll be top 10. If she beats that girl, she beats this girl. This girl's so good, and she's undefeated, and she's a world champion over here, and you know that... I think I've always kind of felt like I was the underdog. So, and them are the only people that I'm listening to. I'm not listening to the general fans out there putting bets down and, and creating the odds. I don't, I don't look at that stuff. So, you know, I think I've always kind of felt like I was the underdog in every fight. So, I you like this role? Yeah, yeah. I got something to prove. I thought you stole the show at the press conference today, as far as your outfit was yeah, concerned. I was looking what, good. What, what is that? Could, could you tell us the inspiration behind that? What would you, you know, is there, was there, you know, a, a thinking, or is that just your general? Did you dress up today? Did you dress down? How would you describe that? Uh, I just dressed. The suspenders were yeah. awesome. I just dressed the way I dress. Uh, obviously, I, I try to look a little ridiculous, but uh, you were trying to look ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a little. I thought you looked cool. I, I do too, and but obviously, I get a lot of criticism from it. So I just, I just Who's criticizing with, you. I just go with it. The guys, the guys, come on. They don't understand. Yeah, haters. Yeah. Arr. And so what are you doing for the next few days as far as getting ready? Is it just business as usual? Because it's kind of interesting, like watching you in your room, you're selling shirts, you're talking about band. Like you're kind of used to the, I don't want to call it the, the smaller promotion style of where it's like very interactive with the fans and things like that. You can't really do any of this or at least showcase this stuff as far as the UFC is concerned, right? This is a bit foreign to you, isn't it not? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know what I can and can't do. <laughs> I just know I can't do anything. So right. I'm trying to not to do anything wrong. I get in trouble every time I fight for Invicta, even when I'm not fighting. I'm in trouble for something. So like what? <laughs> Kissing Laura Sanko. Uh, that God, was a great every, moment. I know. Fucking haters, dude. <laughs> Fucking haters. But um, I think I get in trouble every single time. So uh, I'm just trying not to get in trouble. Okay. Well, I must say, this is a great story. I feel like for people who have been watching you for so long, to finally see you here on this stage, on a card like this against an opponent like Cyborg, it does feel, as far as the MMA community is concerned, that there's a lot of people sort of pulling for you. Do you sense that as well? Do you feel like there's a lot of people who are like, this is cool, finally Tanya's getting her shot? Have you sensed that at all? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the real hardcore women MMA fans, they're, they're, uh, they're in tune with like who's good and who's been around. and and who's out there. So I think those people are excited to watch me, and then all the people that hate Cyborg are excited to watch me. But um, it's not because they're fans of mine, just because they hate her, and, and obviously vice versa. So they want to watch me get my ass kicked out there, I'm sure, too. But it ain't happening, because I don't let people beat my ass. They might give me a submission, but they ain't beating my ass. Do you know how you're going to win? Do you envision it? Do you see it? Uh, no, I'm not good at visualizing okay. stuff. So I close my eyes, and they try to stay shut, and they don't, and I just see black spots. So. We don't envision stuff over here. We just do it. All right. Wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Can't wait for it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.